The last time I addressed you, Episcopal Relief and Development was working in 32 countries, reaching about 1.1 million people. Now, just three years later, we are working in more than 46 countries around the world and reaching 2.5 million people. Because of your help, our programs are impacting almost twice as many lives. A great deal of our programmatic success over the past triennium is due to you, the bishops of this church. So many of you have been generous both with your advocacy on our behalf and with the time and treasure and talents of your diocese, and we're deeply grateful. We've been focusing on new ways to connect congregations to our partners and beneficiaries in the field. Last June, we launched a new interactive website featuring resources for churches and stories to give a voice and a story, uh, give, give a voice to our program beneficiaries and partnerships in the global church. We are using social media platforms such as a blog, my blog, Facebook, and Twitter to establish new ways to interact and engage with people in congregations around the country. Our donors, our diocese, and our church partners can use these mediums to get more involved in the work of Episcopal Relief and Development. Gifts for Life, as many of you know, has been a huge success. This alternative gift campaign has greatly expanded over the triennium, and now Gifts for Life brings over nearly a million dollars each year. But on a more personal note, it connects the donor to the people benefiting most directly from our programs in an impactful and emotional way. One of the privileges of my job is to be the recipient of letters that we receive from our donors. For example, a priest in the diocese, in, excuse me, in North Carolina shared a letter with me that he received from a young parishioner of about seven years old named Zach. And I'd like to read Zach's letter to you. Zach wrote, Dear Father Roger, I saw a goat in Episcopal Relief and Development's book. I ordered the goat for you and me. <laughs> Maybe that goat will go to Haiti. The hungry people can get milk and cheese from a goat. They'll be excited. We will call her Faith, like in Jesus. Love, Zach. It's humbling and deeply encouraging to see young people so generous and enlightened and enlivened by this ministry. The question that everybody then wants to know the answer to is, what have we done with that money? Well, the money has been divided two thirds, one thir into thirds, one third going to health programs, working with Jubilee Ministries in Latin America and the Caribbean, and the other two thirds, uh, and, and the other two thirds going to support the Nets for Life program. In Latin America and the Caribbean, we have provided basic sanitation systems and wells that eliminate waterborne diseases that claim the, li the lives of nearly 4,000 children every day. Smokeless stoves that re reduce acute respiratory infections and chronic respiratory disease, a leading cause of death in children under five in Latin America. In addition, we focused on knowledge about HIV AIDS and how to prevent the spread of the disease. Of course, an additional amount, the $2 million or more, has gone to support Nets for Life, Episcopal Relief and Development's program partnership for malaria prevention in sub-Saharan Africa. Many of you saw the film at the Global Economic Forum with my colleague, Dr. Steven Zitzi, which I think tells that story very effectively. Nets for Life is a key part of Episcopal Relief and Development's global strategy, and it grew out of a trip that we took with a major donor to Zambia to see how we could reach people beyond the end of the road. We discovered that people who were suffering and dying from malaria were dying because they had absolutely no understanding of the cause of the disease, and they did not have access to nets for effective treatment. Realizing that these communities were beyond the reach of the national health system in most of these countries, Episcopal Relief and Development was in a unique position in partnership with our Anglican churches in the region to reach people, indeed, beyond the end of the road, people that for whom the church was the only place that they could turn in times of need. Because of your support of the MDG Inspiration Fund, Episcopal Relief and Development has been carrying out what has become a groundbreaking, groundbreaking malaria prevention campaign. Nets for Life currently works in 17 countries and has distributed to date more than 1.5 million nets. We've trained over 6,000 community volunteers and more than 11 million people have benefited from Nets for Life to date. The real impact of this program on communities is hard to fully comprehend, but I feel that a priest from one of our partner churches, who again wrote to me to talk to tell me about Nets for Life, 
can really sum it up the best. And I quote, Before Nets for Life came to this area, community members used to wake me up in the middle of the night at least four times every month to baptize and anoint a sick child, only to bury him or her for the next day. <clears throat> Since that program started, such midnight calls have ceased. Nets for Life is going to be a major focus of Episcopal Relief and Development over the next triennium, and it's going to be kicked off by Bishop Mark Hollingsworth. I believe you have, with a rod, bike ride from Anaheim to New York, I believe you have, uh, or was distributed to the house, a pledge form. Uh, Bishop Hollingsworth is going to be leading a team of eight cyclists from the Diocese of Ohio across the country to raise funds for the Nets for Life program. And I encourage you to fill out a pledge form and drop it by our booth or send it in. And I'd like to thank Bishop Hollingsworth for this leadership. It's really very exciting. Now I'd like to also look to the future a little bit. Episcopal Relief and Development has just completed a strategic planning process that took approximately a year. And all of you were invited to participate in that process, for which I'd like to thank you. Out of that process, uh, emerged five key goals for Episcopal Relief and Development over the next three years. The first goal was to continue our focus in international work, in international programs, fighting extreme poverty and disease worldwide, working primarily within the Anglican Communion by supporting quality programs that promote sustainable development and provide relief and recovery in times of disaster. The second goal is to affirm our commitment uh, to help equip U.S. dioceses in the United States to support congregations, agencies, and communities in times of disaster so that they can, we can enable them to better respond to and recover from those disasters that impact the vulnerable in their communities and elsewhere. The third goal is in church engagement. We seek to engage all Episcopalians in the work of Episcopal Relief and Development as the compassionate response of the Episcopal Church to help heal a hurting world. None of this, of course, would be possible without goal four, funding. We need to constantly increase and diversify the revenue streams that support and sustain the programs and operations of Episcopal Relief and Development. Our final goal is visibility and awareness. We want to position Episcopal Relief and Development in the Episcopal Church, the Anglican Communion, and the wider community as a valued partner and leader in responding to human suffering. On behalf of the people we serve, I am deeply grateful to you for your partnership. I just recently returned from a field visit, a monitoring and valuation visit to northern Ghana, where I had the privilege of visiting a number of the villages that are served through our partner in that area and in Nets for Life. In each one of these villages, there's a, a format to the, to the visit. It was, it was hinted at in the video with Stephen Zitzi, where there's a drama of the play that people use to educate the community about Nets for Life, testimonials about how this program has impacted individual lives, a home visit to be sure that the nets are all being properly used. And then at the end, I was sitting at the final village, and the headman of the village uh, said that he wanted to make a gift and, and to Episcopal Relief and Development and the people of the Episcopal Church on behalf of his village for the work that we had done there. And he said that he was very embarrassed that uh, they couldn't give us the kind of gift that he wanted. He told me that he wanted to give us an elephant. That was the grandest gift that he, he could think of. But instead, what they'd done is they'd collected all of the eggs that had been laid in that village on that morning. And they presented me with a bowl of eggs. I promise I didn't bring the eggs. But I did bring the bowl. And they said, take this bowl back with you to the Episcopal Church to show how grateful we are for the love that they have shown to our community. People they don't even know thousands of miles away. And so it was my privilege to accept that bowl on your behalf and to now share that bowl with you. Thank you very much.